Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a hand clap yes. of praise this morning. Hallelujah. He's so worthy. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. He's been so merciful to us. Hallelujah. Yes, he has. You know what? He went to a cross and, and gave his life when he didn't have to, just so that we might have life. He gave his life to, so that we could live forever. You know what? We owe him all the all the worship. We owe him all the praise. We owe him all the glory and all the thanks. I tell you what, he's been good to us all week. You know what? What a beautiful sight when you look at the church. When you look out over the congregation, you see all the smiling faces. You know what? God's been good to each of you this week. You know, and not only that, but He's allowed us to come together one more time. And in His name, in His name, we come. And you know what? He's here in our midst, and He's here to save. If if you need salvation, He's here to heal. If you need a healing, He's here to touch you in whatever manner that your life may need. His, because he's a high priest that can be touched. Hallelujah. Let me invite you right now. Let's just raise our hands towards heaven. Hallelujah. Just reach out to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Strength 
altar's open if God's talking to you. You need a touch from heaven this morning. This altar's open. Hallelujah. Come on, just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. What once looked like a mountain It's just a hill from heaven's point of view. Give thanks unto the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. You can be seated just for a moment. Hallelujah. So thankful for the Lord's mercy. So thankful for his grace. Hallelujah. At this time, help me make welcome. Brother Jason, give him a hand. So good to know Jesus this morning. Amen. And as uh, Brother Michael said, thank you for being with us this morning. We're going to receive the tithes and offering. Uh, uh, going to that portion of the service, only take just a minute. I always want to encourage you, but, you know, we woke up this morning with the favor of God, and, you know, there's so many good things that can happen in the world, and uh, you can be sitting on the top, but I tell you, you've never sat on the top till you, till you woke up knowing Jesus, amen, and um, uh, it's such a blessing. Um, when God said that he would make his people above and not beneath, that's what God meant. Uh, when he said that he would make his people with the head and not the tail, that's what God meant, amen, he um, how many knows the psalmist said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed beg bread. 
Now, that's a promise of God that you have this morning. And I want to encourage you that you, as a giver this morning, as a tither, you walk in the favor of God. It said here in Deuteronomy, verse 6, verse, I'm sorry, uh, chapter 6, verse 10, it said, It shall be when thy Lord thy God shall brought thee into the land which he sworn unto thy fathers. It goes on to say Isaac, Jacob, and all these. And, and to give you great and goodly cities which thou buildest not. And it said in verse 11, And houses full of good things which thou fillest not. How many knows that God gives you everything that you have this morning? Amen. Everything that you have or you possess in, 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 the, in the world today, God has allowed you to have it. It said in verse 12, he said, Beware that we forget the Lord, in and, and, and which he brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt. And it was talking in the Old Testament here. Let us not forget what God has done for us this morning as we sow into the kingdom of God. I guarantee you may not be sitting here exactly where you want to be today, but I guarantee you if you've known Jesus very long, it, you're sitting a whole lot better than you used to be. I know that God's done something for somebody in here this morning. Amen. Everybody has something to give the Lord this morning. The offering takers are come. We'll get ready to receive the offering. Amen. Such a blessing. Don't, don't, don't let Satan uh, rob you this morning. Reach your hands this way. Let's ask the Lord's blessings upon this, uh, on the giving. Father, we just thank you this morning as we sow into the kingdom of God. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you've opened our eyes to give by faith. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you've blessed everything, Father. And you said everything that we put our hand to would be blessed, Father. As we sow, we sow not only for us, but for our kids, our families. Lord God, we trust you with these finances. Let it go meet the needs, Lord, of your house. Father, we ask you, Lord, to bless the givers just as you did the fish and the loaves. We thank you for it. Amen.
see whatever life would throw my way. Oh, but this I will admit, Lord has brought me to my knees. And I need you, Lord, and I'm not ashamed to say. to trust you and believe. Yes, it does this morning. Hallelujah. You see, I face, I faced a mountain that I never faced before. And that's why I'm calling on you, Lord. And I know it's been a while, but Lord, please hear my prayer. And I need you like I never had. to get a hold of me but your love is so much stronger this morning Lord your love is so much your voices. Sometimes it's trouble see. Sometimes it takes a desert just to get a hold of me. Oh, but your love is so much Trust you and believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's once again, let's all stand to our feet once again this morning. Let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. He's in our midst. Hallelujah. At this time, help me make welcome. Brother Keith, give you my hand. Well, let's give the Lord a shout of praise this morning. Amen. How many knows he's a mighty, mighty good God this morning? While you remain standing, amen, I want you to turn around and look towards the back of the door. I don't mean to embarrass nobody, but I want you to see a miracle sitting back there in that wheelchair this morning. 
Amen. If it hadn't been for the hand of God, he wouldn't be here. But the hand of God, amen, that Patrick is with us this morning. And, and in his right mind, that's a miracle this morning with the accident, what he's been through. But thank God he's here this morning. Because he's a mighty, mighty good God. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. So good to see everybody in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. The beautiful singing. Give these singers and musicians just a great big hand this morning. Amen. Turn around turn and just look at somebody and say, good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Also, we have a, 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 a new little visitor with us this morning, Becky, and uh, she brought her new little baby girl, Brother Dwarney and Sister Dorsey's grand girl. Is that the only grand grand girl you got? Wow. And her name is Chrissy. Amen. Or Christina Elaine. Amen. So give her the Lord a good hand this morning. I thought she looked a lot like her pa, but hallelujah. But God's a good God. How many of say God's a good God this morning? Amen. It's so good to have them with us this morning. Good to see every one of you in the house of the Lord this morning. And how many of say he's a mighty, mighty good God? Well, he's a good God this morning. Amen. I love seeing you boys on the, and young lady on this front seat this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. God is always a good God to us. And how many has been blessed to be able to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. How many blessed to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. Appreciate the goodness of the Lord this morning. Uh, before we change the service, um, Sister Lisa also gave us a bulletin. I thought, thought I had it in my right here with my papers, but anyhow, the flyer this morning was awesome. Amen. So give in the Lord a good hand. Amen. Good job. Hallelujah. Amen. God's a mighty good God this morning. Amen. I feel like the Lord visited me this morning. It was somewhere around 2.30 this morning. The Lord visited me and, and showed me some things and and I believe this morning that the Lord has a word of the Lord for me and you. How many believe the, how many come for a word of the Lord? Not just a sermon, but the word of the Lord this morning. And I believe God has that if we're willing to say, God, give me an ear to hear it. Give me a heart to understand it. Amen. Amen. But this is this came to me this morning. And amen. As I was amen. This is Robin's song, but I'm gonna try to sing a course of it, and she's gonna help me, okay? People said I'd never make it. Said I'd never, never sit through. They don't know what keeps me going. How many feels that way this morning? Well, my life was a shambles. the day you came along oh, yes. you turned my tears into laughter and you gave me a brand new song sing it with us and I'm still holding on Lord I'll never let you go somebody ought to praise Truth, you know Lord, that. I said you're never gonna see you see. through. I'll tell you, I got something oh, keeps me going. Oh, but they don't know what keeps me going. Woo. Somebody ought to give him some praise. That's why I you're guess here. I they never have met you. You see, my life was a shambles. Somebody oh, praise him. Oh, until 
the day for you came along. Oh, you turned my tears into laughter. Hallelujah. Lord, you gave me a brand new song. Yes, he did this Thank morning. Thank you, everybody. And I'm still holding on. And Lord, I'll never let you go. says that all things work together for good of them that love the Lord. And if you love the Lord this morning, God's working even the bad situations for your good. That's a promise. How many believe that? Because people said that I'd never make it. They said I'd never see it through. But I know this, that they don't know what keeps me going. 
They don't want to teach me seeking the Lord. How many glad you got something that's real this morning? How many glad you got something real this morning? Hallelujah. A lot of things you don't understand, but God, God is working it out for your good. Joseph didn't understand. Moses didn't understand. Amen. But God knew what to do. I just want to be that like that heart after that water brook. I want my heart after God this morning. Amen. How many of those? He's a mighty good God. And I'm still holding on. Lord, I'll, I'll never let you go. That's in my spirit. Lord, you, you gave me. me a spirit. I preached it last Sunday morning. Just turn it loose. You touched my heart. heart. You touched, touched my, my soul. soul. that this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. One more time, would you give the Lord some praise this morning? Amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. You may go to your Sunday school quietly and reverently this morning. Amen. Got a couple of thing, things I want to do, but I won't. I, I don't feel like doing it right now. I feel like going to the preaching. Uh, but my dad had a birthday this week. We're gonna sing Happy Birthday to him in a few minutes. Eighty-seven years young. Amen. And uh, Brother Austin's gonna sing a song for Sister Kathy. Okay, we'll get that in just a few minutes. But I feel like just going to the Word the way things have been set up. I don't think we got nobody left much in here this morning. They're all young folks. That's all right. Amen. God is a, how many say God's a good God? Amen. How many's um, when I listen to the news and I listen to um, what the most crisis that's facing facing our nation right now, and, and I listen to different things, and I believe that according to the world or to the news polls, the number one problem today or the crisis that we're facing is inflation and the economy. But uh, that's from a natural standpoint. But when you look over at the spiritual side of this, there's got to be something bigger than that. And uh, the Bible says when the wicked are in authority, the people will mourn. Amen. You're going to have all, you're going to have more troubles than you've ever had because when the wicked bear rule, they institute laws contrary to the will of God. Amen. And then we amen, then we have to bear under some of those things. We may not do them, but we're under that rule of that. Amen. And uh but our number one, I want you to listen to this because this is really going to do Take this finger like this. I'm all the time pointing mine. Point it back at yourself and said, this is where it's at this morning. Because here is the thing with you and I this morning. The number one goal of Satan is not to cause a recession or a depression. The number one goal of Satan is to destroy the family. Because when you don't have the family, you have no institution of the church. Without, see, God, now I want to say this in the, in the right contents. Everything got to be put in the right perspective and, and, and the right thing. Amen. God created the family before he instituted the church. Amen. Because without a family, you don't have a church. Now, that doesn't diminish the church. It's just saying everything has to be 
in the right order. God made Adam and Eve, and then they had church. They worshiped. They walked with God in the cool of the day, in the garden. Is that right? But if there had not been a, a Adam and Eve, there wouldn't have been no walking in fellowship with God. So you have to understand something. Amen. And, and amen. And Satan is all of the gold. And ever, there's not a person sitting here this morning that's not had some kind of attack or been attacked or is being attacked. Amen. Amen. And not only, amen, with the family, with, with our health, with maybe with finances, amen, but something. And I want to show you some things that the Lord really dealt with me upon and uh, he, he did me. So, amen, I, I feel like it was for this service this morning. And uh, I really want you to understand what uh, uh, the Lord is trying to say to you and I this morning. Amen. Because if you, if you don't understand what I'm saying to you, then you're, it, it'll go over your head or you, you won't pay much attention to it. But we're living in the last of the last days. How many really believes that we're living in the last of the last days? How many really believes that? Now, how many believes that's a serious time? Now, let, let me tell you what, what it means to be living in the last of the last days. Okay? Can I give you that? Can I give you a definition of that? Amen. I'm the doctor, we'll say. Now, look at this man right here. And I'll say, son, is your house in order? Have you got everything in order? Because you've probably got less than 24 hours to live. Now, would you take that really serious? Or would you say, uh, oh, I ain't going to put on attention to that. I'm going to have 25 hours. Now, would that be serious if he only had 24 hours left or 25? Maybe he's going to push the limit. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So when you realize that we're living in the last of the last days, and somebody said, well, my grandma believed that. But we, we, amen, amen. The day of Pentecost was the beginning of the last of the days. But amen, we're living in the last moment. We're living in the closing of the hour. And maybe I could illustrate it to you like this, maybe just a little bit better. Amen. On the day of Pentecost began the last days, according to Scripture. And the door was open. But as time is coming to an end, that door is getting closer to being shut. And it's getting get real. It's going to get harder and harder. And one day that door is shut. Just like it was on the days of Noah when God shut the door. God shut the door. Noah didn't shut the door. God shut the door. And when God shuts the door, nobody can open it. And when God opens the door, nobody can shut it. Can I get a, How many of y'all like to have revival here this morning? How many like to see a move of God in your spirit this morning? Amen. I'm not going to be preaching much on revivals coming. Amen. We're going to have to experience revival right now. We've got to look at it right now because if you can delay it, procrastinate it, put it on down the road. The Bible says the day is the day of salvation. The day is the day of what you and I have need of. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you're going to create victory, it's going to have to be the day and not worry about tomorrow. How many believes that? Amen. Hallelujah. So God is saying this to you and I this morning. Amen. And I want to go to uh, Scripture. Amen. In the book of, uh, I want to go to Mark chapter 4, Daniel. Amen. But as we go there, I want you to put up on the screen Proverbs chapter 25 and verse number 28. Now this is what Satan is trying to do to every one of us. Everyone, and not just this little group of people, but every child of God, every person that's desiring to make heaven their home. They're running this race. They're living in a world that's so full of sin. And, folks, they're making laws every day, amen, to destroy the family. And when these little children, amen, folks, you better teach your children. Amen. It's your responsibility to teach them, not, not some pervert down yonder. Amen. Teach them right. Teach them the wrong. Teach them what's good and what's bad. Amen. Because if you don't build that foundation, they can't stand. And they're brainwashing our children like a flood. How many believe I'm telling you the truth? Amen. People so mixed up. Amen. It's unreal. Amen. And it's a sp demonic spirit of hell. Teach a little girl to be a little girl. Teach a little boy to be a little boy. And tell him what he is. That's why God made him. And if he has feelings, deal with those feelings enough, amen, to realize, amen, i got to get victory over this thing. 
Amen. And if you, amen. Now we got to the point that if you don't even feel like a man or woman or a boy or girl, you can just be nothing, gender neutral. And let me tell you, it's going to only get worse and worse. Amen. Now listen to this. And God began to deal with me upon this to say this. He that has no rule over his. Now, we try to rule other people's spirits. <laughs> oh, God, that went over real good. Amen. Don't raise your hands. I wish they were here to hear this. Help me. If they was here, they, could, they needed this. How many believes that? Amen. He that has no rule, now listen, it doesn't mean, the Bible said a righteous man can fall, but he'll get up. Amen. But here, here's the thing. When you totally, this, this means totally, when a person has no, no rule, none, none. Now we all falter. How many's ever faltered? I'm, six of y'all, bless you, your hearts. <laughs> but he that has no rule. Over his own spirit is like a city. He's powerful. He's a light. He's compared to a city. Look at this powerful scripture. He that has no rule. Now listen. Every one of us has faltered. Every one of us has got angry. Every one of us has got fluctuated. Every one of us has had a problem. But when there is totally abandoned, this is what I want to get to you. And this is the devil's job, is to get us to abandon or to walk away or to surrender our fighting against him. Can I get a witness? How many of y'all ever get flustered and said, foot, I'm tired of When you get so frustrated, you'll walk away or you surrender to that situation or that problem. Can I get a witness in here? I may have to preach this three or four times to get it all out. But he that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is, amen, that is broken down. Like, amen, now listen to this. He that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that's broken down. How come the city got broke down? And without walls. Walls are necessary in your life in the right perspective. Not walls of bitterness and walls of, uh, 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 of dissension and walls of uh, 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 contention against people, but amen, we've got to have walls. Now listen to this word walls, what it means here to the point, amen. Now listen to this, what the definition of this, this is, amen. Walls represent protection, stability, security, and establishment. Walls, amen, their structure, amen, now watch this, their structures that, that protects, providing security, and represents a place of shelter, for a sense of belonging. Now watch this. Amen. Walls represents these things. They represent the strength of the people. Amen. Your wall will tell how strong you are. Now, one thing better than that. Walls also represent the strength of your God. Now, here's the thing. Now, I know that we've got walls that come down the road. Amen. But I'm not preaching about uh, they're coming down there. We're talking about walls of protection, walls of security, walls that help you and I protect ourselves. It's a defensive weapon that protects us from what's coming at us. Y'all with me this morning? Amen. Now, you've got to understand what I'm going to bring out to you this morning. So when you and I understand, amen, now, if I've got a wall of bitterness, I need to tear that thing down. If I have a wall of resentment and strife and unforgiveness, I need to tear that wall down. But I also need a wall of God, a wall, amen, that protects my spirit from every force of hell that wants to run in and out of my life. 
And Satan realizes as long as you've got that defensive wall and that wall is there to protect us, uh, amen, he cannot accomplish what he wants to do. Can I get a witness in here this morning? Amen. Now, one more place this morning. Amen. I want to get ready to go to the book of Mark, chapter 4, Daniel, verse 35. Amen. But the Bible says in St. John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not but to kill, steal, and to destroy. How many believes that? I quote you that scripture so many times, you should be able to read it backwards. But here is the thing that you and I need to understand this morning. Amen. Amen. When our spirit, when we have no control over our spirit, Do you ever see a place that gets uninhabited? Groundhogs will get in it. Varmints will run through it. Wasps will build nest in it. Birds will build nest in it. It becomes a place of inhabitation for anything it wants to come in out because there's no protection. Now, when you've got no control, now, amen, raise your hand and say it. Thank God I got just a little bit at least. <laughs> I've done, done got some of y'all done crawling on the bench. But anyhow, but when there is no control over our spirits, we're like a broken down city and without walls. That means Satan can do anything he wants to do in our lives. Now, here is the thing why we've been fighting so hard. Because Satan is trying to break down the walls that you have up that protect you and keep you. I mean, believe that. Amen. Walls of righteousness, walls of holiness, walls of godliness, walls, amen, amen, of prayer. Prayer builds a wall around you. God put a hedge around Job. Because, uh, amen, not because of Job's wealth, but because Job decided to follow after God. Now, here is the thing that you and I need to understand. When you really make up your mind to follow the Lord, Satan will pull out every arsenal he can to destroy you. How many believe that this morning? He wants to destroy your faith. He wants to destroy your belief. He wants to destroy your praise. He wants to destroy your confidence in a God that still sits on the throne of heaven. Now, folks, I've had the devil at me at every angle, amen, every time that God begins to try to move for me and to, wants to do something, here will come an attack of the enemy. Somebody shout amen. But here is the thing. I want to say this, and I, this is where that it's required of me to repent or to you to repent. You are re responsible for what you allow. a place for the devil before and you have too. I ain't going to ask you, have you? I know you have. No matter what it is. Some way, somewhere. Now, for you that are high strung or quick tempered, he's going to bombard you right there. Where you've had trouble, some kind of addiction, he's going to bite fat you right there. Amen. Now, if he sees he cannot personally take you down, He's going to try to use your spouse, your children, your job, your health. Huh? Am I right? And if he can't use any of those, this is going to be good. He'll use myself against me. He'll use my past, my failures, something that you'll lose confidence and come off the wall. Can I? Sorry about that. Somebody shout amen. I just got stuck there for a second. How many believe I'm still telling you the truth this morning? So how do we protect ourselves from, amen, I can preach to you, but I want to talk to you just for a moment. How do we keep ourselves, amen, watch this. The same day when the evening was come, he saith unto them, this was Jesus, unto the disciples, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, he had fed them and, and preached to them, they took him, that was Jesus, even as he was in the ship, and there were with him other little ships or little boats. And there rose, everybody shout a rose. 
Amen. How many loves when things are going smooth? But every time that happens, something's going to rise up. He'll rise up on the main days is Wednesdays and Sundays. Or Tuesday afternoon. He'll do, he'll do it any time, but them's two main days. If we had church on, no matter what day it was, that'd be the day he would try to rise up. Somebody shout amen. Now look at this. This word arose, amen, is mentioned over 200 times in the New Testament, and it describes something that happens unexpectedly or something that catches one off guard, amen, as an element of surprise. Now, here's the thing. Everything going pretty good. You're feeling better. You feel like God's touched you. Woo! And here comes a hail storm at you that you wasn't expecting and the sun is shining. Amen. Brother Buddy and I, I told you all that story. We took the tent. Amen. We got dropped the tent, and you don't want water around the tent. Amen, because it'll rot, it'll melt you within a matter of a, a day or so. It builds up heat, and when you when it melt you, it literally rots and falls apart. So you can't put a tent up damp. You can't put a tent up, amen, some do, amen, fold it up, amen. But you will ruin that tent because it builds up heat, and, 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 it, and it, does, it destroys the cloth or the vinyl, either one. He'll, he'll eat it apart. But here's the thing, amen, amen. The sun was shining, we thought we had it made, didn't we? And the sun was a shining. And he just come the best little rain you ever seen. I stood there disgusted. It's Wednesday. We're an hour and a half from home. Folks, we went to Whitley City before they put the new road 27 through there. When they made that first road, they followed some kind of a snake up through there. And he was a cook, crooked one too. Somebody shout amen. You can meet, folks, they had they them, black, them uh, what do you call them, mirror things that on some of them driveways because they couldn't see to pull out in the road. So here's the thing. And there arose, there arose, amen, something unexpectedly happened. What expect, unexpected. Now, how many knows that these disciples were fishermen? Now, I believe that they checked the local weather, uh, uh, weather forecast. Then, amen. The stars are shining. The sky is clear. The wind's not even blowing. If it is, it's just a small, gentle breeze. Now, no sailor, no fisherman would get in a boat except Jason Stills <laughs> and go out on the ocean at 10 foot swales. <laughs> he was going fishing. He was going fishing. Oh, God, that was. Uh, Somebody shout amen. So the water was calm. Y'all listen to me. The water was calm. The ether was good. Them guys would not have got out in that boat. They would have known better. Amen. Everything was in good condition. But all of a sudden, a surprise element happened. Somebody shout amen. And sometimes it lasts longer than we anticipate. Y'all still with me? Amen. It's greater than we thought it was going to be. I have fought battles, but there's been a few battles that's beyond the normal. Been, been, beyond, been beyond just the everyday normal things that a person has to go through. Anybody been there besides me? Amen. Hallelujah. Now watch this. They begin to they begin to think about this. They, they they got into the boat, and Jesus said, "Let's go to the other side." And then all of a sudden, the, uh, unexpectedly, Amen. It was a surprise, Amen. Maybe not to Jesus, but unto those disciples, because they based the last thing they seen was clear sky and a starry night and a soft wind. People get at ease when that happens. People don't want to go to church much when that happens. Am I telling the truth? They don't pray as hard as they did. And 
And then all of a sudden, everybody shout a great. Shout it again. A great, not just a wind, but a great storm of wind. Somebody shout amen. A great storm of wind. Hallelujah. Give God a shout of praise on that, would you, this morning? Come on. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus found himself and his disciples uh, out there in the middle of that sea, uh, out there in the middle of that lake, uh, amen, and there grows a great storm. Uh, and what was this storm? Uh, it was a storm of wind, not a rainstorm, uh, not a thunderstorm, uh, but it was just a violent wind. Just a violent wind. It was, it was not a rainstorm. It's not a thunderstorm. It's just a great storm of wind. How many's ever been outside something else and all of a sudden just a big puff of wind comes by? And you say, Where'd that come from? And it, you know, it was over. But this storm of wind was relentless. It would not let up so that he got the waves so high that they begin the waves begin to come into the boat, the waves of water. How many of feels that way? And your boat takes on water. Now, what's that got to do with no rule over your spirit? We're going to find out here just in a minute. What I'm trying to tell you is we all need to humble our hearts as we never have. And we need to make sure that the Holy Ghost is in control. Now, amen. We've all come through these storms. Somebody shout these storms. How many's ever had an unexpected storm? How many's ever had an unexpected storm? How many's ever had a storm that you didn't, uh, amen, didn't prepare for? You didn't see it coming. You ever been there with me? Huh? <laughs> Suddenly this great storm of wind and the waves Beat into the ship. Now watch this. When waves get into a ship, it fills that ship with water. Now, one thing you don't it don't hurt to be is the boat on the water, but when you get the water in the boat, that's another story. Now, how many of y'all ever took on water before? <laughs> Can I just preach to y'all for a minute? Is it hot in here or is it me? Okay. Now, Amen. I do my best in 40 some years of the ministry, 40, 45 years of ministry. I have prayed. I've sought God. I've fasted endless days. I've cried out to God. Amen. Amen. Everything. And I've sought the Lord. And I've always, and God knows this, if I never walk out of this church, I've always desired, amen, the will of God. But a few times I've not listened to God. And any preacher that ever tell you he's listened every time to the Lord, I'm going to question his credentials. Because a few times, this wanted to have a picnic instead of fast. It wanted to go yard sailing instead of prayer. <laughs> I just thought that fit pretty good this morning. Somebody shout Amen. How many, how many knows what I'm talking about? Now, he that has no rule over his spirit is like a person that gets caught in a storm and his boat gets full of water. It will sink unless you do something. Now, how many of you, I don't want no hands raised, don't want no confession this morning, I ain't got my collar turned backwards. How many of you lately have fought with something so hard it's made it unimaginable in your mind? Anger? If I've had one phone call, I've had probably 50. Preacher, we're having a, I love her. I love her to death. I'd fight for her. But we just can't get along. 
It's nothing. Oh, did I feel that tightening up. But we can fuss and argue over nothing. <laughs> Excuse me, let me put my blinders on for just a minute. Am I right? Why did you pull that many tomatoes off? You know I only wanted two. Well, honey, I'll give them somebody. They saw some. Throw them away. But why do what we're doing? And then it don't stop with the tomatoes being pulled off. Then we bring up something else with the tomatoes. I'm only preaching for the fun factor today. Y'all want to move? Them stinking kids. Them kids has pushed me to the limit. If I could, I'd give them away for a little while. Now, some this don't fit everybody, but I'll, I'll get y'all somewhere down the road. Maybe Brother Calvin, he don't have kids, he ain't got a wife, but that crazy car and that fishing rod. It can be anything. Can we please that? I'm just kidding. Anything. It can be anything. It can be the guy that mows your yard and he had to mow it right after it rained and he tore your yard up, he wadded up grass, and you can't stand that. I can't stand that. That's me. I'll mow it three times if I have to, but I won't wad grass up. So if you mow my yard, don't wad the grass. Well, come on, somebody. Is, is, is this good preaching? Huh? Listen, the next time you drive my car, you better put gas in it or me and you going to talk. Am I, am I still preaching? I'm just trying to bring out some things that you and I need to hear about this morning. I fill it up, gas too high for you to drive it, and not put gas back in it. Y'all want to give me one of y'all's, uh, uh, what y'all been going through? I'll, I'll... Excuse me? Oh, Okay. I'm with you, brother. Somebody shout amen. My son-in-laws are like that. They're taller and longer. And first thing they get in my car is they've got to move that seat. they got to move that seat. Well, I don't want to sit on the steering wheel. Oh, God, I can't say that. Oh. Yeah. Come on, come on, let's come on. Put it back where you found it. <laughs> Play me. Now, you've done better than I've done all morning long. I mean, they see you got them. Now, how many? You started, though. Somebody shout amen. So here is the thing with you and I this morning. If Satan can start seeing, uh, amen, that we've got no rule in the area of our life, and all of us need to take notice to where that where we got no rule hardly. Listen, he's not going to torment me or text or, or, or text me. He's not going to test me. <laughs> oh, I got a text from the devil. Wow. <laughs> Don't leave now, Steve. You must have got one too. But <laughs> how many of y'all ever had the devil text you? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I got some folks that had that to happen. Amen. But where, <laughs> I don't even know where I'm at. But anyhow, 
Amen. If Satan can see an area in my life and we have, we, amen, our testing, amen, Satan comes to bombard us, amen. Give me that picture, Daniel, that I put up there. Amen. We're going to get into preaching here, man. But I just got to lay this out to you that you've got to understand where the disciples and the Lord was at. They was in that lake, amen, all of a sudden out of the clear sky, out of a wind blowing softly, everything was smooth. All of a sudden there was nothing but chaos. Chaos. And it upsets our spirit. It frustrates us. It gets us to the place, why I try? Why I go on? Why I fight this when there's no victory over it? You got that picture, Dan, that I said it to you? Am I preaching to y'all this morning or not? Amen. These are things in life. Amen. I don't like it no more than you do, but God began to deal with me. And the Bible said there rose a great storm. Uh, amen. There, amen. Over 200 times it's talking about the word arise uh, or rose. Uh, amen. It means something that will happen unexpectedly, uh, something that catches us off guard. Uh, it's an element of surprise. Uh, amen. Jesus and the disciples did not expect bad weather that night, uh, but all of a sudden the wind overtook them. Jesus was in that boat with 12 disciples. And the wind and the waves had overtaken them. Hear me? It overtook them. And they were sinking. You can't get water in a boat. And 12 guys, 13 guys in there. Get enough water in there, it'll sink your boat. And please, it'll sink your boat. Look at the people that the boats have been sunk. If you're here this morning, I'm here this morning. It's by the grace and the mercies of God. And we should shout amen. amen. Does your life ever feel like that sometimes? Just everything explodes. I thought the other day, I was listening, amen, I, I, I believe it was in Michigan, it may have been somewhere else, amen, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the fire station got a call, amen, uh, 9-11 or whatever it was, the fire, and, and they give the address, and the guy said, I know that address. This happened. This was on the news, I believe, Friday. Did you hear it? Where, where, where was it? Where was it at? It's Michigan. I believe it's Michigan. And he realized it was some of his family members. I think two of his children, maybe an aunt and an uncle, a grandpa. It was like nine of them, son-in-law. They all were burnt in that fire. He rushed in the door, I think it was, 10 of them. 10 of them died. Family members. Could you imagine? I mean, you're, you're always having somebody else, but all of a sudden, now it's you. Amen. And I can always look at somebody else and say, well, you get the victory. But when it's me, it's a different story. God help me preach this morning. Amen. And Satan, uh, amen, wants this in our life that we're so much caught up uh, in the disaster, uh, in the problems, uh, and we're running over here, we're running over there, we're trying to find a little ease. Uh, that's what happened to Samson. He was trying to find a place uh, of rest. Amen, Brother Wayne. Horoscope is not your answer. Palm reading is not your answer. Some soothsayer is not your answer. We're going to find out what the answer is. Somebody shout hallelujah. Everybody shout a great storm, a great storm. And the boat began to be filled with water. And all of a sudden, everything that was peaceful and normal, amen, it was out of proportion. Amen, it was in a such a way, amen, that nobody could control it. I wonder how many people, how many of us has had something in our life in the last ever what time, especially lately, that seems to just be out of proportion. This phone call. I'm trying to talk to them, and they won't listen. <laughs> Every time me and him talk, we wind up in a fuss, worship, than before we started it. It's an attack of hell on your home. On your home. You ever had an attack on your home? Yeah. Every 
all of us as targets. Am I preaching y'all this morning? How much will it take to frustrate you enough that you'll surrender? Hmm? You surrender. You give in to the enemy, your opponent. You just surrender to him. That's what Satan wants to do. Can I get a witness? I want to make this foundation sound as bad as it can for just a moment. I've been through my storm by the grace of God. I can help you. Somebody shout amen. Let me believe it's time right now to do something. Not tomorrow, not next week. God, I won't rule over my spirit as I've never had. And the only way I'm going to get rule over my spirit, now listen to this, is not to surrender to the enemy, but to surrender to God. Now, I wrote this down. <laughs> Nothing under God's control is ever out of control. How many believe that? Now, let me ask, let me show you this. Who said go to the other side? Peter. James. John. They were fishermen. Did they say go to the other side? Who did? Jesus did. So it was in his control and his direction. Number one positive idea right there. Now, I want you to think about this. When you and I will put everything under God's control, and if you're in a battle this morning, you're fighting something so hard, keep giving it to God every day of your life, no matter what it is. You can't believe it. The people sitting in this building right this morning, the devil's talk, talking to you about suicide. That thought run across your mind. Suicide. I talked to a guy a while back. He said the devil planned it out for me and showed me exactly how to do it. And he said, here's the problem. He said, the longer I listen, the stronger that got. The, strong, the more I listen, the stronger it got. You cannot keep your mind on negative things. It will destroy you. Am I preaching to y'all this morning? I love you this morning. Amen. I, I, I'm giving you my life this morning. I've done that for 40-some years. Amen. I've been in the storms of my life where the water, the, the water was coming in the boat faster than I could bail it out. Anybody got a cup? Uh, yeah, yeah, give me the red thing. Somebody shout amen. Look here. Water's coming in by the gallon. This is all I got to bail it out with. I'm going to work myself to death and still sink. <laughs> Am I preaching to y'all this morning? Amen. I'm and I'm getting nowhere. How many feel like your life has been like that at times? Hey Amen. Y'all got poker faces this morning. <laughs> Y'all trying to, and I'm working, I'm working. Bail, brother. I'm wore out. Bail. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, help me. Come on. <laughs> We're sunk. I shout amen. Now watch this. The storm was great. There was no storm as far as thunder and lightning. And it was nothing but a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full of water. Somebody shout amen. Oh, my God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Next verse, Daniel. Amen. Okay. And he was in the hinder, Jesus. He was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillar, and they awakened him. Why was he asleep? Why was he there resting in the midst of this great turmoil, in this great time of, uh, uh, of trouble? How many of you feel like the Lord goes to sleep when you're in trouble? Amen. He don't answer. He 
You don't do, amen. You want him to, amen. But listen to this, amen. And they awakened him. They woke the Lord up. They said, amen, that he was tired. He was exhausted. He was weary from all the preaching and healing the sick and casting out the devils. And he was asleep on a pillar in that ship. And they awakened him. And they said unto him, Master, amen. I don't believe they just said, Master. He said, I believe they said, Master, Master, don't you care? Don't you care? Do you care not? Don't you care that we are perishing? We're going under. The water is in the boat. We're in trouble. We can't control it. It's out of control. Amen. How many knows that fear and anxiety, amen, and all these spirits of oppression are trying to sink your boat? But the Bible said, call on the name of the Lord. I'm here today because I called on the name of the Lord. Don't get weary in well-doing. Your boat can be full of water, but don't quit. Somebody shout amen. The word surrender means to, listen to this, means to cease resistance to an enemy or an opponent and submit to their authority. That's what Satan wants you to do. Had a guy tell me a while back, he said, I'm so tired of fighting this old mess. I'm thinking about going out and getting drunk. I said, that's a, that's a demon lying to you. Am I preaching to y'all this morning? Help me out a little bit. Amen. God's, amen, them disciples, they was in a place of anxiety. They was in a place, amen, of fear and torment. Amen. They said, Master, don't you care? We're we going to die. That word perish is the same word as to die. To be no more. Same word. Without a vision, my people perish. Same word. You become annihilated. You become shark bait. Don't you care that we perish? Somebody shout amen. Now watch this. Everybody shout now's the time. We cannot compromise. I am responsible to say, God, it's me. It's me. It's not him. It's not her. It's not them. It's me. Now, that's hard. Now, I'm not saying blame yourself, but be responsible for yourself. Blaming yourself is not going to get you healed. Blaming yourself won't cure you. But acknowledging Open the can of worms. Now watch this. Thank God there ain't going. I ain't got a can of no worms this morning. Somebody shout Amen. Next verse, Daniel. Now watch this. I don't care what your troubles are. There's still a God. Walls represent protection, providing security, represents a place of shelter for a sense of belonging. If Satan can get you to believe that you do not belong in any situation that where God puts you, you'll make a bad decision. Well, not my daddy, but I won't use this. Maybe people use this to me. My daddy never could stay married. He'd been married seven times, and I'm just like him. Well, that went over like a ton of bricks. My daddy's drunk all of his life, and I just can't help him drinking. I was abused, and it goes on and on and on. You know that story. But I want to say something this morning about the grace of God has helped me. I'm 64 years old. My daddy just turned 87. My mama just turned 81. And I've never heard either one of them in all of my life ever curse 
I've never seen them ever drink or smoke. Now, that don't mean they're perfect. But it was a, it, it was a, a stability for my life. So how you live makes a difference for your children. Am I preaching to y'all this morning? This man sitting right here can tell you, he's a college professor, he can tell you some of them kids that go to college has never had a day raised in their life. Amen. Am I preaching to y'all this morning? I talked to a lady today, she, she called me and said, Gene, she cried. She said, I got grandkids. I said, I got five of them. She said, they never get a breakfast. She said, mama sleeps all day long because she's up all night drinking and carousing. She said, if my grandkids get up and if there ain't some dry cereal in the house, they, either get a, they don't get one bite all day long. That's sad. Because nobody's got rule over their spirits. We're blessed people this morning because we got rule. And Satan don't like that rule. And he wants to try to tear down the wall where he can run in and out. And that's why you've been in the battle you've been in. Because he's wanting you to tear your wall down. And if you let your wall get tore down, then he has free access. You have surrender. You ain't got no choices. Am I preaching to y'all this morning? How many children in America, in Russell County, in Adair County, will go to bed hungry, get up hungry, unless they find some cornflakes? That little lady, she said, I try to get my grandkids if I can. And one day a week, I know that they'll have a little bit of food to eat. Here's what God began to deal with me. He said, I want you to understand and tell the people that I am in the midst of their storm regardless of what's going on. No matter what you're facing and fighting right now, it may be yourself, you're blaming yourself, you're belittling yourself, you're condemning yourself, but if it's on the blood, the devil's got no right, no authority. Can I get a witness in here? That'll make somebody want to shout hallelujah. Amen. God is not interested in your past because God does nothing with your past. He only has to deal with your future. God is a, amen. Now, I know that God was, amen, when we was back there, amen. But he said, I am that I am. That means God is your present help right now. Not, not, not. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. Amen. Everybody shout the storms. <laughs> Unexpected. How many of y'all lately, by raising your hand, has, amen, out of nowhere, here's something hits you blindsided. Hold them up high. Hold them up high. I, I, I'm not trying to embarrass you. I mean, all, I ain't talking about just a little. Phew. I'm talking about a storm of wind. And I want to tell you something. You that didn't raise your hands and you have not had it, you better get ready. Because if, if you do anything for God, Satan will try to take you down. How many believe that? He wants to stop revival because he knows revival. At any moment of time, something can stirring you and all of a sudden you begin to get a hunger and a desire and a passion for God like you ain't never had. My God, give God one more shout of praise in here. Come on, give God a shout of praise in here this morning. Come on, give him a shout of praise in here. Amen. Now listen, when your, when your spirit, even your human spirit, amen, amen, becomes subject to the warfare of Satan, uh, amen, and there's no, no wall uh, of the spirit up, uh, amen, then you're vulnerable, uh, amen, and you're subject to attack, uh, and you've got no control over nothing. But God's good. The Bible said he woke him up. Here's where we're going to get into this. We, we're done. 
The Bible said they woke up Jesus after I, I don't know how long it was. I don't know how long they fought against it. It doesn't say if it was th- five minutes to 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, five hours. I don't know how long the storm was, but I know one thing. The boat was now about ready to be sunk. Uh, amen. They thought they were perishing, uh, but amen. Uh, they know one thing to do, uh, and that was to call upon Jesus. Uh, let me tell you something this morning. When everything is falling apart, uh, keep calling on that name. Uh, that's the only help. Uh, that's the only, can I get a witness in here? Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh, help me, uh, help me. Uh, if you've got to do it 10 times a day, 20 times a day, if you fall down, get up. Uh, if you fall down, get up. Uh, keep calling until you hear from heaven. Well, somebody ought to shout yes in here. If he can frustrate you enough, you throw in the towel, you surrender to the enemy. Devil, I messed up. Devil, I, I lost my temper. Devil, I said something I wasn't supposed to say, but I, God, I'm so sorry. God, he smote my heart. I, I win repentance. I, can I get a witness in here? I, I didn't handle it right. I, I didn't say it right. I, I don't know what happened. I, I, amen. I, I'm not trying to excuse it. I, I'm not trying to make little of it. I, I just blew it. I, but God, I, I need your help. I, and when that happens I, and you keep calling, I, he'll rise up. I, there's the same word rose I, as it was a rose of great strength. He arose. Anytime you've got a storm like that, get him to arise in your rising storm. I'm going to show you a couple things if you'll give me just a moment. The rose of great storm, unexpected, tremendous, violent, out of control storm. Amen. But he arose too. Everybody shout, he arose. He arose. I always grew up in that old age when television was halfway decent. And uh, I always loved old westerns. I love old westerns. They're like old westerns, them old ones. And when the town is about to surrender to the bad guy, in comes Clippity Clopper on that white horse, white hat, two guns. Amen. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? And he saves the day. That's the way the Lord is. Listen, you cannot help me, God. Help me in this. How many of y'all want to be honest with God? How many of y'all want to be honest with God? How many of y'all want to be honest with God? Just go to God. Amen. I'm not telling you to tell the big gossiper in town about your problem. Just go to God and say, God, I know you know me, but I just want to tell you I need some help of this. No matter what it is. Can I get a witness? Everybody shout, he arose. Shout it again. He arose. And what did he do? Out of, out of chaos. You know what the devil's trying to do? Tear your family apart one shred at a time. Please hear me, every one of us. Please hear me. When your poor old pitiful husband has not put the seat back to where it's supposed to be, when your poor old pitiful Pitiful husband lays the seat back and sleeps while he's driving. Or while you're driving. Okay. Okay, gotcha. And you tell him. My wife sometimes she says, if you take your shoes off back there, it wouldn't be so bad up here. You know when I always think about taking my shoes off? Am I preaching y'all? Randy loves to cook, but he can't. And he makes so much a big a mess cooking. The whole kitchen is in disaster. Him cooking. He's got flour, he's got meal, he's got grease, he's got food throughout all the kitchen. And Randy's done a good job. He eats, and all he done was fix a peanut butter sandwich. Huh? <laughs> huh? 
Randy goes in that living room. Is it okay me go ahead and tell the whole story? I'm making it up anyhow, so don't worry about it. <laughs> he sits on the couch, pulls that recliner out, eats that peanut butter sandwich, starts to steal everything in the kitchen. He don't think a thing about it because he's enjoying his peanut butter. She's flustered already. She got up with a migraine. She got up upset at you anyhow because of who knows what yesterday. <laughs> I don't want you to feel like a stranger, brother. And it don't take nothing. <laughs> but listen. <laughs> but when the boy tries and says, I'm sorry, Please listen to me, please. He's begging for mercy. He's begging. He won't quit it. Next time he'll probably do the same thing again. But listen to me. You know what he'll do? It's not for him. It's for you. It'll help you. Your blood pressure won't go up. Your sugar level won't go up. You won't be stressed out. Oh, that's $20, brother. <laughs> Am I telling the truth this morning? Am I telling the truth this morning? Am I telling the truth this morning? Amen. <laughs> God's good. How many know it's amazing how Isaac and KK, you know, and they, they can't do no wrong today. Get married and see what happens. Down the road, way down the road. And he arose and broke the wind. I've gone, I'm closing. And said unto the sea, peace, be still. Please hear me. When somebody, if you were serious, you'd listen and not do it again. Not next time. Somebody shout amen. We are a work in progress. Thank you, sister. She's helping you. Thank you. And he rebuked the wind. And said, watch this, peace. So when there's chaos and the storm is on, there is peace in the midst of that. You just got to find it. And what happened? And the wind. Now remember, he arose, the storm arose, and there was a great wind. He arose, rebuked the sea. Peace be still, and the wind ceased, and there was a. Look out, that was all the different times. Great. He arose, great. You understand what I'm saying to you? Now listen to me. You know, say God's good this morning. I want you to ask God, God help me with my, my spirit this morning. God, I need protection from the invasions of the demonic powers. God, I, I, I need some more control of my spirit that when things don't go the way I plan, God, that I, I can keep my heart and my spirit under control. I'm preaching to everybody in this building this morning. Can I get a witness in here? There was a, ter there was a, ter a terrible storm on out there today. Have you believed that? But isn't what Jesus did. Jesus met that storm with a great calm. God, somebody will shout amen. There was a great storm and there was a great calm. I can't tell you that everything will get better all around you, but God can get you better. Can I get a witness in here? I don't know what the enemy has tried to create in your life. I don't know what kind of problem. It could be a, a financial problem. It could be a, a, a sickness in your body. It could be a marriage problem. It could be a business problem. I don't know what kind of problem that the devil's trying to throw at your body or your mind or your spirit. But I believe this morning there could be a great calm. Can I get a witness? Come play softly on the music. Just come right now. Just play softly. I want you to listen to me as I close this morning. God visited me, and I know what he told me. That God wants to change in your spirit. You've got to say, Lord, let me tell you something. Come here, son. Here's another miracle this morning. Because Satan tried a few weeks ago, a month and a half ago, 
to fight this boy's body so hard, he couldn't play the piano. He couldn't play the guitar. He couldn't do anything. See, Satan will do anything he can. Satan's after your home. He's after my home. He's after your home. Let me believe that. He's after your children. You've got three of the, you got three, four kids. You got four. You got four good kids. You got two kids. Two boys, two young guys. I called them boys earlier and I said, boys, forgive me. You're not boys, you're young men. They both smiled. You got two beautiful daughters there and a son in law. Is he a son in law yet? No, almost. But you're blessed. You're blessed this morning. Now, Satan do anything he can to destroy you, to get to you, or vice versa. Vice versa for your home, for you, Sam, for you, sis. You do anything you can to destroy you. But Jesus arose. You're blessed to be in church this morning. But you see, I remember something about you about 13 years ago when you came to Rowena, knelt down the altar, and got saved. Tears streamed down your cheeks. God touched your life in a way that nothing else has ever touched it. Seth and Shelly came. They brought the little one, Miley, in a carryall or something like that, or a baby, one year old. Wow. Wow. Listen, folks, Satan wants to destroy you. And we've got to say, God, I need some help with my spirit. I can't let the, I'll put it like this, I can't let the accelerator get stuck every time I get a problem. Stop, back off. Say, God, I can't handle this on my own. Master, help me. Raise your hand and shout, Master, help me this morning. Come on. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Next verse. A great calm. And he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it you have no faith? One more verse. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? I want you to raise your hand this morning and say, God, everything has to obey you. Come on. There are some things we need to tear down. And there are some things we need to build up this morning. When you surrender you to God, there's a victory for you. When we surrender to God, we don't have to surrender to our enemies this morning. And I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know what's battling you this morning. But I know that God is good to you. Somebody shout amen. Raise your hand and shout God's good to me this morning. And I want us right now to stand to our feet and say, God, I need touch in my spirit. My spirit needs a healing this morning. Hardly have no confidence in myself. Hard for me to praise the Lord because I didn't handle a situation real good. I mean, believe that. I'm preaching to you this morning. But God, I need you. Come on, raise your hand. Say, God, I need you this morning. Come on. As they come to the music, everybody. As they come to the music this morning. We've had our eyes on people. We've had our eyes on this. We've had our eyes on that. Had a person tell me a while back, they said, I can tell you what so-and-so's war every time they come to church. I thought, my God, you've got your eyes on something you don't need your eyes on. Because that's going to sink your ship. Can I get a witness in here? I don't know if this morning if you're in financial trouble. I don't know if you're and what your need is. But God wants to rise and speak to you against that storm. I don't want to be without protection of my spirit this morning. How many feel like I preached to you, talk to you this morning? The Bible said, blessed. Daniel, go to James chapter 1 and verse 12 as I close with this. Raise your hand and say, God, don't you care that I perish? How many ever feels like lately that you didn't know if you're going to get through that storm or not? But the Bible said, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Every one of us going to have these. 
Blessed is the man who endure temptation. For when he's tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. How many of you are a blessed man or a blessed woman this morning if you've been tried, but you're still on the winning side this morning? How many glad you're on the winning side this morning? How many glad you're on the winning side? This morning, as we close, when you say, God, I need control over my spirit some more. God, it may be in an area that I gossip, I fall fight, I fight unclean thoughts, ever what it may be. But God, I need your help this morning. God, I got to have you. Would you help me this morning? The Bible said he arose and spoke and a great calm came. Great peace as they sang softly. Come on, raise your hands and love you this morning. Ask God to help you this morning because Satan's trying to tear your walls down. God, the devil's trying to tear your walls down. He's trying to get you to be vulnerable to his problems. But God wants to deliver you this morning. Raise your hands and love him, would you? This altar is open if you're lost. You need to come, just come and pray. There's nothing wrong with Christians. Pray on this altar. God, I'm in a struggle of my life. But I need you to help me this morning. How knows there's victory? How knows there's victory this morning? Come on, worship the Lord. This altar is open. Would you, would you come this morning? You need prayer. You just need prayer for help this morning. Child, your cry and woke the master. You're surely drowned. Oh, but you cried out for help from your Savior. And you know you can't give up. Anybody else? Anybody else? And you're frightened and nowhere to run. By now your vessel is filling. Oh, and you think that you're going to drown. But you cried out for help from your Savior. And you know well, somebody you give him some praise. Come on, somebody give him some praise. Because you prayed all night. And you I believe we're on the verge, amen, that people's getting a stirring in their spirits. How many feel like you've been awakened, that God's moving in your spirit, that you're getting a hunger and a desire, that you just got to go out just a little bit further by the power of the Holy Ghost. That's why Satan has done everything he can to stop us as a home, our homes, our families, everything that we are. But I got news for the devil. Amen. I know the Lord has a rose. And he's speaking to the storm this morning. Somebody raise your hands. He's speaking to the storm by the power of an almighty God this morning. Child, your I woke the master. One more time, sing it. Because Anybody else? And you held oh, on yes. with all of your might, child, your cries, I woke up the master. For he knows your voice, lift your hands, it's time to rejoice, child, your cries, I woke up the master. I 
close with this, and I don't think there's a person in this building. Maybe I'm wrong. I didn't say it was the Lord. I said I, I believe this. But there ain't a person in this building in the last 30 days or so has not felt an anger above that which we all get upset sometimes. An anger that goes above that. Now, maybe some of you, but, you know, that old mmm down inside that you don't share. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. See, Satan is trying to tear down, bombard our walls. But I believe that Jesus has rose and said, peace, be still in this storm. That there's victory in Jesus this morning. How many believes that? Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise.